How much does dirt, sand, and sweat damage webbing? Well, we did over 100 slack snap break tests on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and welcome to my gear room. Rob Smith, the guy who makes slime soap, is out of the Michigan area, and he messaged me and asked me if I've ever done tests on dirt, sand, and sweat in and how it affects webbing. And I haven't. I've only peed on webbing, which you can see here. But something that's a little bit more relevant, especially when I've been at the beach, I've always wondered how much damage am I causing to my precious webbing when I'm letting it just rub through the sand and dirt. Well, he took the initiative to find out for us, since he is Mr. Slime Soap himself. So he purchased the webbing and cut it into pieces and prepped all the samples and he flew out here to California and broke them on the machine here. He also helped with our CRG 200 meter experiment that we did to test the ENOV splits. This video you can see right here. And we found out how much dirt affects it. And of course, we tested with soap to see if soap helps it or not. And then Dan Walsh, the president of Slackline US and the owner of Concord Analytics, he analyzes data, was so kind and analyzed our 100 samples. Didn't realize how much work it got once it got over 30 samples. And he made us a really cool chart, which we'll show you in a little bit, of our results. Before we dive into the data, I'm going to have Rob Smith show you how he designed the experiment. The way that this is going to work is I'm going to put uh, six pieces of each type of webbing into the saltwater mixture, also a mud mixture, and then a sand mixture and then I'm gonna clean half of them. So we'll have three breaks, you know, salt water, three that are dirt, three that are uh, mud, and then we'll have three that have been cleaned just to compare what it looks like. So what we have for webbings here is this mantra, MK4, just a tubular webbing um, from REI, like climbing spec, and then uh, Aero 2, also from Balance Community. And now this next part is why I love Rob. He went above and beyond to do something somewhat silly to test sweat and body oils on webbing just because it was funny. We've gotten everything squared away as far as the salt water, the sand, and the mud. So what I'm going to do now is basically take six pieces of each and wrap them around me like so. And then sit in a sauna until these are thoroughly soaked in human oils and sweat. I will try and get some footage of it. However, I don't know how easy it's gonna to be to have a camera going uh, with naked dudes in the sauna. So, wish me luck. So Rob Smith came to California and we broke stuff for days. This is what 100 samples looks like in real time in 30 seconds. <laughs> Let's go over the data. Each of these bars here represents the average of the three tests that were done. And you can see here on the brand new webbing that the Aero 2 was on average a little bit stronger uh, before we cleaned it. And after we cleaned it, it went down to this. And same with the MK4, this is pretty much the same. And these are actually the same for the nylon tubular webbing. And you can see here on our mud and our salt water, that are clean samples stronger here and here, but not on the Aero 2 for salt. It is for MK4 salt and about the same again for nylon. But we could noticeably see a difference with sand when we were breaking the cleaned samples versus the dirty. These three cleaned averages were stronger than the uncleaned ones. The sand inside a webbing here, here, and here damages the fibers as we are tightening only once. This doesn't even consider cyclic loading where it could be causing quite a bit of damage if the sand was left in it. And sweat 
is basically irrelevant. Cleaned is a little bit lower here, a little bit lower here, and a little bit stronger here. I don't really think sweat does a lot of damage to webbing. And we can compare it to our brand new webbing over here. They're about the same. That's about the same. And this is about the same. Here's a fun one is our permanent line that I had set up my arrow two on my permanent midline in the trees that I've done several videos with. You could see uh, the uncleaned version here, just the way I took it down after I derigged, is significantly lower on average around 17 kilonewtons, whereas brand new Aerodu was breaking around 28, 29 kilonewtons. So we lost almost 10 kilonewtons, leaving it up for only one year in the trees permanently. And you can see here how cleaned versus uncleaned doesn't really make a difference because the damage is already done. Basically, you want to get the sand out of your webbing as soon as possible. And salt water would probably cause damage over time. And same with mud. Uh, these were only soaked in the mud and salt and sand. And it wasn't actually in the fibers being oscillated over and over, cyclic loading, stretching, and um, being used. I think when you use the webbing with mud, salt, and sand, it would actually cause a lot of damage. And I don't think soap is going to make that stronger. However, if you can get it out of your webbing, it will preserve the strength more and more as you're using it. Now, if you have hundreds or thousands of dollars invested in webbing, it's nice to keep it clean just for visual purposes also. And soap versus just straight up water actually binds with the dirt and can pull it out of the fibers better. All you have to do is put your webbing into a bucket of warm water and pour in the amount that it recommends on here and then swoosh it around a little bit, let it soak, let the soap pull that dirt out, and then you just rinse it two or three times. Now, Rob designed this soap with the Natural Soap Company in Michigan to not be slimy, ironically, uh, which if a, like a normal soap could leave a residue on the line that can make it slippery and possibly slip and webbing or leave residues you don't want. This is a natural soap that allows friction to stay on the webbing while still cleaning it. So thank you Rob Smith and Slime Soap for sponsoring this video and doing all sorts of experiments to help us get one step closer to understanding how dirt, sand, salt, and sweat affects our webbing. And we can do some more experiments in the future with different kinds of soaps maybe, or uh, webbing that was in sand and then used multiple times and then broke test to see how fast it deteriorates as we kind of use and abuse the stuff. This isn't magic soap that makes your webbing stronger, but it can preserve it and keep it clean. But even perfect clean webbing doesn't always break consistently. Therefore, you shouldn't highline.